My name is Zhen Xin. I am 38 years old. I joined the Church of Almighty God in 1997. I was arrested and tortured for a month and a half by the Chinese police for believing in Almighty God. I had been sentenced to re-education through labor for two years. After being released from prison in 2010, I was still being investigated and pursued by the CCP government. I was forced to live in exile for years. The following is my detailed statement. On July 31, 2008, while doing church work, I and two sisters of the church were arrested by the police of the Jixi City Public Security Bureau in Heilongjiang Province, China. I learned from the police's word that they had been monitoring and tracking me for six months. The police said that it was unlawful to believe in Almighty God, and I was a target for crackdown and arrest by the state. They even snatched away 100,000 RMB that the church was going to use for producing gospel DVDs. At the Public Security Bureau, two policemen coerced me to tell them the whereabouts of the church money and other brothers and sisters. I kept silent. They fiercely slapped my face, punched my head and face with their fists, grabbed my hair, and swung me around on the floor, kicked me in the stomach, and severely pinched the pressure points between my index and middle fingers. They also forced me to fly the plane, that is, extending both arms forward horizontally while holding a half-squat position. When I couldn't hold it any longer, they would beat me. I was tortured like this from noon to eight o'clock at night. The beating made my head numb my lips pout, and my body swell all over. The pain was excruciating. The police continued to interrogate me. When I kept silent, he acted in a crazy way, picked up a mop to rain blows on me with a wooden handle. I was hit hard on the head several times. The wooden handle broke into three pieces. I was knocked unconscious. The police woke me by splashing cold water on me. <coughs> then they lashed my swollen arm with a broomstick. It was not until two o'clock in the morning that they stopped out of tiredness. I was lying motionless on the floor, feeling weak in my heart. Thinking about the unknown torture I still had to face the next day, a wave of fear swept through me. I could only pray to God over and over in my heart when I went to the toilet the next morning, I discovered that I was unable to stand on my feet. I could only move forward slowly by leaning against the wall. In the toilet, I touched my skull. The top of it felt soft. There seemed to be some fluid trapped inside that was moving in my forehead and face. I saw bruises over my body, muscle knots over my left leg. The muscles on my arms and thighs were tight like drums. It hurt so much that I couldn't touch my limbs. I realized that my injuries were serious. In the afternoon, a policeman shocked me with a high voltage electric baton and punched and kicked me. I felt numbness and pain all over my body. I was lying on the floor and almost unable to move. I smelled the fine hair on my arms burn. The police forcefully kicked me and shouted, by the order of the state, killing you people who believe in God does not count as killing. Our Communist Party is in power today. We want to fix a date for you with death. They tortured me until early morning. At that time, there was only one belief in my heart that if God did not permit me to die, I could even survive on my last breath. On August 2nd, the two policemen placed a black hood over my head, dragged me onto the police car, and took me to a small two-story building in the mountains. I saw the sister who had been arrested with me. We were kept in different rooms. The police guarded us 24 hours a day in three shifts. 
On the evening of August 3rd, the police started to interrogate me. They shocked me with electric batons and took turns punching and kicking me, torturing me for most of the night. During this period, the screams of the sister under torture continued to come from the next room. On the August 4th, I heard that the sister had almost died after trying to commit suicide by cutting her wrist because she could not bear the torture. I was grief-stricken. I could only pray silently for her and ask God to give her strength. At night, two policemen beat me for three hours in turn. They tied a rough strip of cloth to the handcuffs fastened to my wrists on the heating pipe high above. My entire body was almost suspended in midair. The saw teeth of the handcuffs sank into my flesh. The blood vessels in my hands were bloated, like they were about to burst. I was covered with sweat from the pain. Then, in a while, the policeman loosened the cloth a bit and tightened it again in another while. The saw teeth of the handcuffs sank into my flesh time and again, cutting two bloody grooves on my wrists since I was swung back and forth like this for three hours. Afterward, they put me down. A policeman forcefully stuffed a bottle of mustard oil into my mouth. I almost suffocated from choking. Such torture persisted until two o'clock in the morning. On August 5th, I was sent to the detention center. At that time, my body was so riddled with wounds that I could barely walk. The police still came every two or three days to interrogate me. They continued to beat me brutally, struck my fingers with a belt buckle, and jabbed my collarbone with their fingers, trying every possible way to make me give up my faith. I lived under a tense and terrifying atmosphere every day. As soon as the iron gate of the cell jangled, I would tremble involuntarily. The one month and 22 days in the detention center was even harsher than the five days under torture. One day in mid-September, the Gypsy City Public Security Bureau directly sentenced me to two years of re-education through labor on the trumped up charges of disrupting social order and then verbally informed my family. It was only at that moment when my family members learned that I had been arrested by the CCP. In September 2008, I was escorted to the women's labor camp in Helongjiang province. The police told the prisoners that I believed in Almighty God and often instructed the prisoners to abuse and beat me. I was forced to work for more than a dozen hours each day, and I had to be on night shift for three hours at night. It was not easy to pass each day safely there. I was only able to pray secretly to Almighty God in tears under the blanket, missing God's love. It was only the power I had received from God that kept me alive resiliently. In May 2010, I was released from prison the police required me to report regularly to the local police station. They threatened that if I was found to believe in Almighty God again, I would be arrested and resentenced. In order to continue to believe in God, I was forced to flee from home. In 2016, under the wonderful orchestration and arrangement of God, I fled to the United States. Here. I finally didn't have to worry anymore about being arrested by the police for believing in God. I can boldly say that I believe in Almighty God and freely witness for Almighty God. I feel very happy and grateful. I also earnestly hope that more and more righteous people would pay attention to the facts of the persecution Christians of the Church of Almighty God are under. Help and protect them and give them a sky of religious freedom. Thank you.